Welcome everybody to the P Podcast, a podcast of the Barcelona International Dance Exchange. Today, in our episode number 88, we have as a guest Atanas Maed. Atanas, thank you so much for being with us today. Hi, Sebastian, and hi, everybody who is uh, listening to the podcast. And what a 88, it's a, like two uh, indefinidos without ending. Like uh, when you put the eight like a number, right? That means it's a symbolic. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so have some 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 meaning, of course, you know. So f first of all, we want to ask you, uh, where where are you from? Where you are talking with us? At the moment, I'm in Plovdiv, so one of the oldest city in the world, you know. Hmm. Uh, it is the the home of my family. Normally, I I'm based in Sofia, uh, but uh, today we have a family occasion, and I came back in. In the city, just about that, they could get me here. Super. So from Bulgaria, with love. <laughs> yes, from Bulgaria, with love, exactly. So the 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 second question is um, because we know each other since a long time ago. Uh, to um, if you can take us a, a bit of who you are, you know, who is Atanas beside of your line of work that we'll be talking later. But if we if you if you wanna um, share a bit. Who, how, how you define yourself in in the current age of of now of warming <laughs> and in this uh, into this intense uh, 2024 this is uh, the question that i'm asking every day myself as well who i am and what i want to make and how to design my life and so far atanas is a uh, arts manager working in the field of uh, contemporary dance also with a quite experience in opera productions uh, because of circumstances in my life but he has co-founder of derida dance center uh, we make a 20 years with derida dance like a company and by the way starting almost from the beginning from spain And uh, as well, Atanas is the person who loves to sport and uh, was training uh, more than 10 years Karate Kyokushin, part of the national team. And yeah, Atanas is a one very curious person that uh, wants to know more and more about the world, about the future, uh, to have friends uh, like you <laughs> with who can discover that I think at some point He's an uh, altruist and uh, trying to leave a legacy and trace after him. Yeah, I think this is him. Okay. Interesting. And, 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 and where, uh, and I call you Nasco because it's your, it's your nickname. Yeah. Nasco, how, how, how is your curiosity nowadays? Where is uh, this curiosity rolling, you know? Just to say Nasco because uh, Atanas sounds like Satanas and in Spain was El Satanas. <laughs> and uh, especially in uh, in Andalusia where I was based, so that was sounding like it's not joking. So uh, curiosity to, uh, uh, to Nasco is uh, uh, it's connected about uh, how everything we're doing changed the world in a positive way. Mm. So that's what is the algorithm of our um activities and maybe the goals why we dance why with uh, culture uh, why with um, positive attitude so that's this is the curiosity and uh, it's more or less like uh, comes from like a questions mm. then start to be a discussion probably at some point then action implementation uh Yes, and it's more the things that I find interesting uh, where we make, a, how to say, we cross our points of understanding and so we make the, the things to happen together. So that's to discover them together, to implement them together. It's uh, maybe coming from there. And the curiosity is connected really to the performing arts, music. So these are what I like and love and think that can convert every negative vibe to a positive sometimes or a question maybe the audience or put a 
important social issues or be brave. It's a, like an independent voice that try to go out and because all we work in the not in institutions, but uh, we are free to really to to make a, uh, statements to try to uh, be how to say more open in sharing our position about the current situation, no matter it's a political or it's um, uh, human connected to human rights or it's connected to the development of the arts. Uh, criticizing or no, uh, so that's this is the the free voice of the free artists, and in my case, in the free manager. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, great. I go on, go on. I think that this sounds for no, no, no. no. I, I don't. I don't know if this was the direction that you asked me, but uh, uh, more or less, we're designers of our life and the way that we want. So that's this is something that maybe connected to the creativity that I hope we are not going to lose with the only thing that it's not so much threatened, although there are more and more algorithms of the AI, mm. but we're not going to lose the creativity. This is something that is in the base of our existence. Mm. Absolutely, absolutely agree. And uh, this creativity um, is part of your, what you are bringing to the performing arts ecosystem, no? So uh, what else you think or you feel that you are bringing to this ecosystem? Uh, being a person who travels a lot also, and uh, as me and other friends in common, uh, we we have a chance to, uh, to be in different type of um, cultural practices, uh, different cultural ecosystems. So um, you have this, um, this chance to go back and forth, you know, from Sofia mm. to different country cities and also meeting different type of artists. So what, what do you should take? What do you think that you, you know, beside of course, of your curiosity, uh, is your, your, your bringing offer to the performing arts nowadays? Mm. Um, Sebastian, I think that moving, uh, around the world is the, the way that we can create kind of energy that can move the world. So if we stay in one place, it's we're going to create a bubbles around us. Mm. Um, but um, uh, my first vision when I was a young uh, uh, arts manager was uh, that's how I should identify the talents, how I can help the talents to grow, to create environments. But should I design this alone or probably we can use uh, already good practices what i can steal from another maybe uh models that can work good or no and this is connected more or less of with your own experience that um, you can just create it when you are on, on, a, on a road when you travel when you meet people and people that grown up in a different environment in maybe different geographical locations with different culture. So we open our eyes and um, enrich ourselves when we communicate with those people and uh, try to give and to get something. And um, in this ecosystem, I think that um, we brought, especially if we speak about our mission to help to our people in Bulgaria first to to grow up like an artist and to uh, really prove them in the international stage. First, it was that, but afterwards we understood that this process has to happen together with all other countries that we create one country of the contemporary dance in that way. So it's not just uh, uh, this kind of chauvinism that who is better than the other. No, so that's we prove that the dance really can change the life of the people in a positive way, can bring a lot of knowledge, can bring a lot of um, open eyes to the audiences and can make them a lot more conscious when uh, conscious when they make their choices. And me like an uh, uh, economist, uh, because I started in like, 
person coming from the engineer economic uh, student in Germany, meeting a choreographer Jeff Kozilasko in the late uh, 2002 in uh, in Paris. So that this was the way that I just started and helping him to, for example, to write his budgets. But I saw then that there are not a lot of people that can uh, translate the language of the artist to the language of the institution and the economics so as to find the indicators. And I felt a responsibility to continue in this so beautiful world of the arts. And this was maybe the um, one of the uh, unique, um, how to say, circumstances and maybe, and. So that's my skills probably in the arts, but the arts in my eyes, so what's a unique uh, to discover myself better, not only like uh, pure economy and mathematics, and that's uh, at that moment I was born in eight mathematics. Uh, and and so that's this this was the moment that I I, I thought, yes, so that's we need uh, translators like me because if you go in, in one institution and say how amazing is the arts and beautiful is a, some performance and work and talent is some artists, this is like to, how to say, to, to speak a Japanese person and Bulgarian. <laughs> <laughs> Backwards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we have to find really the common language to create our, like we say, common territory that we can leave the people to feel comfortable and to understand each other. So it's uh, maybe the key words nowadays to maybe everyone wants the same, but from different perspective. And if we don't find how to cross our understandings with, uh, how to say, with, and the way that we can really share what is in the other person's skin, what is in our skin so that's then it's we are putting maybe in confrontation ourselves in states to be in a partnership so this is the way the difference with between the competitor and the partner also mm -hmm. i could place here that is almost nothing so that's we mm -hmm. just have to find where we are together with institutions with uh, competitors with uh, people that grown up in a different uh, maybe political and economical regime. So all that is maybe um, responsibility and some mission of the people that are nomads, like uh, I think like me, like you, like our friends in common that you mentioned. But yes, we are traveling just to connect our worlds and maybe to see that from the top, we live in one territory. If you go from the top of the how to say of the world <laughs> and see our world from very high uh, position from a bird eye so that you see that we are all together. We don't have nothing to, to, to separate in between us. We have to really create this environment that is a fruitful. So that's tomorrow to have um, the beautiful life that has all that ingredients that make us happy. Mm. Sorry for the philosophical way of expressing. No, but I think no. that this is uh, the way that maybe it was a starting point of my uh, understanding what I want to be tomorrow, who I am, and so. And here was coming always one question. What makes me or what makes our organization, the Rida Dance Center, what makes the Rida a good partner? Mm -hmm. So that's how, what we need to have so that's, our partners can really benefit from it, what we can give. In the beginning, it was the space that was lacking in Bulgaria. So there was not almost a studios mm. where the dancers can go and train. So that's we created, created a studio. Then we saw that this studio has some slots that are empty, that we said, so we said to be empty so that we have really to make them valuable for somebody that exactly at that moment is looking for this studio. Then we created the residency program that had the aim exactly to connect artists in the space. And this program became international afterwards, was recognized like a good model from the European Commission in 2014. So all these circumstances came from 
answering the question, what makes a good partner, Derrida? And then we understood that we need really to, to put some more instrumentarium in the uh, in our uh, um, toolkit that we can uh, offer. So and th then appeared the, the theater during the stage in the city center of Sofia. Then uh, appeared the festival that we make uh, every November. Uh, so there were a lot of how to say. Uh, recognizing needs with the field and with the partners that so that everything we are doing benefit our company but recognize the needs of our partners and of the field and mm -hmm. little by little I think that this was the good way and the formula of uh, the growment of the company mm -hmm. great you, you 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 take two different important uh, words but also topics no is one is this what 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 is the means of being together you know and the other mm -hmm. one about this uh, uh this um this perspective vision you know where we are um whatever you are or whatever you are from or whatever you are proposing things or, or producing things uh, we are not so far from each other um and this drive me to the next question uh because uh, i know that you're a you're a person who really do a lot of things so so it's it's more about you know our listeners to to know how uh immense um i mean how how many things you are dealing with and, and proposing from from derida and from sofia and not from yourself as a person also but i want to ask you uh um where do you draw inspiration from you know uh beside of the i mean you named the, the traveling you know and meeting people uh but also you have another another inspiration uh, type of places where uh, you can take some ideas. Yeah, um, I so that the the inspiration really started to come from uh, from the artists, and I was always very curious to see what's happening in the kitchen when we are writing in the next door the projects, for example. So it was more to uh, me and my my team so that's to when we we are somehow try to put everything on uh, um, in the project and paper like we say in Bulgaria so then first to understand why and for whom and what is going to benefit so and we started really to be very active going and uh, following the process in the in the studios or in the stage, uh, then, as you know, so that I uh, had to be also a backup almost to every role in the beginning because uh, it's not very easy to make a team from the from scratch. And then the first thing that you make is to understand the nature of every role in your organization. So I was working together with. Uh, uh, like a technician in the very beginning in Spain, for example, for two years, I was working also in technician in the very beginning. So I, like a light and sound technician. So the same happened in Sofia when we opened uh, the, the, the reader stage. So, and this is the time that we are all together. And it's a, for me, when I see some effect and when I see the reaction of the artists, how honest they are and how Happy there when something happened. It's a like explosion of emotion that I, I my sensitivity so that's accepting my um, in my universe. So it's the same. And then I uh, I'm broadcasting this uh, to that reflects, for example, to the motivation of the rest of the team that we are preparing, for example, the projects to find uh, new possibilities, conditions, new partnerships. And first, it was connected to this, uh, to how to say, to the center was the reader. Mm -hmm. But at some point, we understood that this happiness really grow, and uh, we cannot stop it and put a roof just on the borders of the reader. As you know, so that uh, we started to be very active in a platforms and in networking. So that's trying to go and to think, for example, how to promote European artists through airways or how to think about 
the artistic conditions and the organizational experience through European Dance Development Network. Uh, and at some point we uh, faced out that we have to think also about the Balkan artists, not only the Bulgarian artists, but the Balkan artists where uh, in mostly of the countries very often they had uh, conflicts or some issues in between where the contemporary dance uh, it's not so good developed, so that this is a kind of um, maybe dreams that we want really to have this consistent ecosystem of the dance everywhere and to have more people included in locations, to think about how we can reach even the small village where the dance never get to the eyes and to the ears, to the sensors of those people that are living there, but probably the biggest talent ever is born there and how we to identify it. So, and this became like a task of a new project that we created in, um, like we started to create it like a two and a half years ago, or two years exactly ago from, uh, it was a meeting that we made in, during Tanzmesse, Two years ago, but then it crystallized and we started to discuss and created a platform called Moving Balkans. Mm. It's a new platform that covers all the region of the Balkans and has representatives from all the Balkan countries that we speak together in the daily base, think about possibilities, uh, trying to present next year, for example, Sebastian and I use your uh, podcast to invite your uh, uh, audience and you personally to the first showcase in the Balkans that we're going to do it between the 10 and uh, the 13th of May. Uh, the first showcase will present top 10 uh, artists from the Balkans and we're going to do that in a uh, very interesting way because the first two days our audience is going to stay and watch shows in Ljubljana meet artists uh, from uh, from there, but also see this presentation of the, per, the five out of 10 of these top 10 artists in Ljubljana. Then we're going to move our guests from Ljubljana to Rijeka, that is 140 kilometers only. And then we're going to present another part of top 10 and then the uh, 13, we're going to move the audience from uh, Rijeka, to Zagreb, and we're wow. going to present them the rest of the uh, of the top ten. So this is going to be trip on the Balkans, in the very beautiful part of the year that is everything green. It's a beautiful part of Europe that you have the Istria coast and Ljubljana, the beautiful uh, part of the Balkans, and also uh, Zagreb. It's an amazing city. So this is going to be a local experience, but professional meeting between the, uh, the, the, the guests, but also to watch so that's who are our artists that we can be proud with. So that's new faces that comes from the Balkans. So it's a kind of mission of this platform, but uh, also we are very much aware that to have really a possibilities, these artists to be, um, they to develop themselves, I would say, so that we all together, all the partners that the consortium is from uh, 11 partners mm -hmm. and also 13 associate partners. So that we all have to work about creating this ecosystem that when you see it, something and see it, the talent or the talent exists, but it's really can be cultivated and grow up in a, um, in a very proper way. So this is the idea and uh, of the moving Balkans and moving Balkans also aim to move in a, these very small locations. We're going to have uh, mobile groups that, uh, from, uh, that simulate uh, uh, physical theater uh, and dance uh, spaces. And we'll go with uh, a kit from 20 to 40 virtual reality goggles in a small locations where the people really can experience the most closest way to watch a dance performance, even if it's not in a, in a physical space, but really to be touched from, <clears throat> to be touched from these two 
uh, to understand what is the contemporary dance. Of course, for new audience, we think about the strategy, not to scare the people because some of the performances are more, you know, uh, have a different aesthetics, etc. But we are thinking about new audience development, how we can go to the audience and not to wait always the audience to come to us. So this is uh, also another another way to think about the audience and also how we can help the artists to exchange in between. We have a co-productions inside in that uh, platform, um, staff exchange options in case that some organizations want to get more experience. It's a very rich project that um, Totally. We are uh, yeah, happy to, to design it, yeah. No, totally. And sounds super exciting. And, and sometimes because the people they are not so aware about the Balkans, you know, thinking about the Balkans as a bunch, and there's a lot of countries there, you know, with different cultures, you know, and, and uh, with different, let's say, proposal, also different and artistic visions. So congrats for this, because I know, because we are friends, and I know how much work you put into that. So, I mean, the sense that is coming, uh, sounds absolutely amazing and also congrats, you know, again, for, for, for make it happen with all your partners and all, all the team. Um, Thank you. Thank you. No, you're welcome. Um, we have two more questions to, to share with you. One is, uh, uh, it's about, you know, we, you just, you know, uh, gave us an amazing, uh, I mean, how can be working with others, how can be associated with others in, and with what type of mission. And basically, I agree about the mission in, in, in the sense of, of you need to go to pick the audience, not to wait in, in the theater uh, and open the doors and say, okay, here we are. Why are you not coming to see our performance? You know? So, um, but I would like to ask you um, what the performing arts um, bringing back to you, and it, meaning uh, what 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 do you take from from there? You know, what is your I mean, you are you are, you go home. You know you prepare your meal, and uh, what what are uh, what, what are your I mean your emotions, your 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 sensations about what is going back to you? You know through the, all this mm. that you are doing. Um, Sebastian, I think that the performing arts and uh, especially the contemporary dance, it's uh, like the innovator in the arts. It's mm. the, like. Uh, pioneer in discovering new territories or new styles or arts cross uh, arts collaboration uh, and it's a very fresh example that it's still reflecting mm. uh, in my uh, internal identity is uh, a, a project that we are implementing right now it's called dancing histories Mm. It's a, between how the dance can collaborate with the archaeology and create a site-specific uh, works in archaeological space and giving a new perspective and life, etc. Mm. Really, and we had the chance to work this year. Uh, so a few days ago, we came back from Sardinia in Taros, mm. uh, where we had on the 14th of July a premiere. But before that, we were in Serbia in Viminatium. Mm. Um, this is an archaeological area that is considered to be really one of the uh, how to say the the, the the territory of the Roman Empire mm. uh, that was a military camp, etc. Very interesting space. I never thought that in Serbia there is such interesting space. But really what we discovered is a excavated like five percent from the entire archaeology the archaeological site but in very very good way and the idea that the the host that is the archaeological institute in belgrade wanted to uh give really this new life into this space and they made it like uh, in a very, very gentle way, collaborating with a dance company like Virida, for example. Mm. So what we made in a in a one cemetery, it's a cemetery between the first and third uh, um, century. Mm. So that there was also a crypt inside that suppose that the emperor uh, Justinian is, uh, this was the end of his life. Uh, 
And we had to make a show in that place. You can imagine. So that's first, you have the stigma of the cemetery. You have mm -hmm. created, so that's, and we had the chance to, to, for example, to choose a space because there is, there is a lot more uh, uh, possibility that was, it's a very big, this Viminatio. Mm. So we chose that and um, we succeeded to give so different perspective with the life arts inside. Because not only life arts, but we used also the visual mapping to um, to simulate and recreate the the dis destroyed part of the crypta. So that's what mm -hmm. we made is a like transparent smoke to fool all the space, and then the video designer and video mapping to to really illuminate the part that was destroyed and to give a totally new view of the entire cemetery, and then to put the life arts inside. So the people and the audience and the locals that were there and the guests that were invited, they were amazed from how this space can really look out where they were maybe more than a thousand uh, hundred times. So uh, the, the life arts bring really new perspectives that sometimes change your, um, how to say, understandings of the the borders what is possible and what's not because it's so open for calibrations that it's uh really giving how to say uh not only sharing the creativity of the artist but giving opportunity that the audience to be an artist in some points you can see the audience that create the piece you can mm -hmm. see different arts that are part of this piece so that is a, a formula that is uh, like open source so you you mm -hmm. You don't have the limits of the classical arts that I fully respect, that have a different role, but you have really the freedom and the the model to um, to be a, a creator without borders. So that's just to to leave uh, the freedom of your uh, creativity. And this happened exactly there, so that you had so many ingredients mm. that were made in a way that they not contradict each other, but they help each other, the audience to see something, to be in a new world for this. They were like a 45 minutes uh, piece that they mm -hmm. enter and they go out like a, a converted. It's a, like a, somebody made a switch in your yeah. daily life. Amazing. So this is what really, really reflect to me and uh, charge my batteries to go further and further and sometimes to be also mm. maybe critical for when I see that maybe the opportunities but they expose in a way that really not because of effort so because so that we know what to look in the future so step by step that this can grow in a way that serves to the people to change their life I started the podcast like that with this that we want mm. to see how with our activities through the arts, you see the results in the audience in a positive way. Okay, and also resonate with you. And, you know, knowing uh, the energy you have and all the things that you are sharing with us, uh, how many times have you thought about quitting <laughs> this this world? <laughs> or maybe you never uh, think about say, say again, because I didn't uh, get uh, your question. Yeah, yeah. So, so how many times have you thought about quitting? If you Quitting? Quitting, yeah, dejarlo. Uh, probably it's, I, I don't understand you, right? So that's I, I, the idea that I cannot answer that question. Bueno, sería, ¿cuántas veces has pensado en dejarlo? Si no es que lo has pensado alguna. Ah, de quit it. Ah, ok, para dejarlo. Uh, to be honest, that um, almost I never thought to, to leave the dance. And mm -hmm. I had uh, one part of my life that I came back from after the project in Spain in 2008 in Bulgaria. And uh, that's time so that there were no conditions, so that's who, no studios, no conditions, almost nothing, no dance center. And I had to start to make money with uh, uh, in one IT company because mm -hmm. I have a background in before the economics uh, in uh, IT. 
and it was a multi-language company so that's i could use my spanish and uh, german languages <laughs> so and this <laughs> way uh i was working three years and i was thinking that yes because i started to grow i became a trainer of the company and uh, got some proposals really the company was uh, not only in bulgaria we were serving to all the market in europe from from the offices in sofia but there was uh, all together seven offices in different countries uh, around the world but um, this was a lot of, a very nice opportunity but always when i came back at home I was really not satisfied from, from me. I knew from the moment that we implemented the projects and the RIDA uh, during the time that we were based in Spain, so that the, the company had a really golden moment. So that's, and this golden moment has to become a platinum, has to continue. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the third year of my work there, we created the dance center in the same building where I was working mm. like a trainer. And then, so that's after the work in the, in the, in this IT company, so that I was going directly in the center and my customers, because we made the dance classes so that we can earn our money mm. were my colleagues because the office was 350 people at that time so that I could attract them really to keep moving and to get some physical balance because working nine hours in the chair with the desk, you get this shape and really it's out of your, how to say, balance in the physical life. Mm -hmm. So that this, they were my first client. And then I understood that I really don't want to quit, but want to continue and left my work in the IT company. And mm -hmm. I continued again after three years break, I continued in the, in the dance field and i understand now that this break was just a physical like a borders that in bulgaria at that time were existing mm -hmm. and our task was how to break these borders these walls between the talents and the possibilities and uh, the dance center continued in this um, business center that was the it company Mm. few years later we moved it in another place but i was watching how my colleagues were from the it company were some of them really speaking how they need something new and they were repeating this every day and uh, until now there are some some of them that are doing that mm. but when a person wants to go and design the life and knows what he wants to be tomorrow then it's uh, like a part to uh, succeed and be successful in what he's doing and I think to be uh, happy. So this was like a uh, moment that I was telling that I don't want to quit with arts never more. So that mm -hmm. I want really this to be my way and uh, to share this way uh, because this multiplied the results with our colleagues, with the partners, with artists. So that's to think more for the big picture of the dance. Fantastico. Okay, so um, for the end, we have a game since last year uh, about that each of our uh, interviewers uh, bring a question or left a question, sorry, uh, to the next one without knowing who be, who will be, you know, uh, maybe, and what type of line of work they, they be pursuing. So what type of question you want to um left for the next one hmm. interesting way um okay in case that your guest can um go for example have a chance to go to the to the moon what is going to uh want to write there and leave it for the next one that they're going to go there and see it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that, I don't know. So that's, let's say that's what you want to leave like a message if you go to the moon or mm -hmm. somebody that's going there to see it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I don't know, Seba, I think that the people, or we, uh, 
we are here for a short time mm. in in that uh, planet and probably we are part of the one big progress mm. yeah we are like oh we are connected we are part of the progress sometimes we think that we have to make a territories to make our life more comfortable but mm. i think that maybe more and more is about to see how we can run this marathon and be part of the progress without losing a lot of energy mm. and sometimes to go further i was watching stars the stars in the sky thinking very much so that's what's happened on the other planets what i want to leave like a trace probably if your guest can share what he wants to share like a message from the earth to the moon mm. it will be interesting okay great so uh yeah. you have a i mean because this uh this, uh, this uh, game have a <laughs> this um also there is a relationship between uh Uh, casual and and, um, and and what we call in Spanish ca casualidad y causalidad. Mm -hmm. So, um, so for you, uh, Janet Novas, uh, a dancer, actress, and choreographer from here, left you. Then the following question is in Spanish, and then I translate. ¿Cómo ves la relación entre artistas y programadores? How you see mm -hmm. the relationship between yeah. artists and programmers? Being you a programmer and an artist. <laughs> Just for, for the end of this podcast. <laughs> There are different relationships that you can see, uh, personal and professional. Uh, but no, I think that the relationship uh, between the programmers and uh, and the artists, it's uh, um, for one successful model, the relationship is successful as well because we are from the same team mm. and And in fact, we want to succeed more results about this team. Mm. That means that they have to really to be in a daily communication. Uh, and some of the artists, you know, are more introverts, other are more uh, extrovert. Mm. But I think that other people, I saw a lot of introverts that you cannot uh, close their uh, uh, mouth uh, so that they start to speak a lot when you really go in their world. Mm -hmm. And the programmers should really find the door to open the world of the artists. And when you enter in their world and they welcome you, So I think that then you are going to have a very strong connection in between. And it is vice versa because the programmers sometimes they are very much pragmatic. They have mm -hmm. to answer to all the opportunities very fast. Uh, so that's they are a lot more, how to say, more business people. Mm -hmm. But this can really, some, so that's from the, from the, The, the the tempo of living of the programmers and, and the artists can be different in this way. So that's, they have to be really very careful and patient to have paciencia a tener mm. Mm, and really to try to understand the arts that they are not uh, just a complicated person that want to make a trouble or drama queen mm. or whatever but they really believe in something and not to forget that the artists choose their work and to, to really to commit and everything they're doing and to believe in it because of their love and because they, they think that this is a, something um, that is a mission in their life and they want to change also the world and show their worlds there and not because of the money. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot of times we want to create a sustainability for them, mm -hmm. but we don't have to forget that probably if they were supposed to work for money, they are not going to be an artist. So we have to be really to find the formula to make the sustainability, to bring opportunities to them, but really to 
explain them that the resources uh, and uh, the, the financial part is important for the tomorrow's life, for uh, building new uh, opportunities, but not just to place them like that. So that's tomorrow you're going to perform, for example, uh, in the other part of the world because uh, you have to. No, that's not. So we have to enter in the world of the artists and build a strong connection and really to speak in the, in the language of the artists at the appropriate moment. Mm -hmm. It's very important. That's also, and I think in that way, so that it's a, we're going to build that strong connection that can contribute to us and really understand a lot more about how to present them, who they are and and then to uh to them for how to say the growment of their career mm. absolutely clear crystal clear <laughs> <laughs> well thank you so a much bit for, long. For, for for being with us today it's a, it's a pleasure to hear you and to also to feel for the ones who know who don't know you the energy the happiness and the professionality behind and the humanity that you also you bring all the time when you are working. So, so it's a pleasure to know you a little bit more and I hope that our listeners also enjoy it. I'm happy to be your guest, uh, Sebastian, and um, really to share with your audience. Uh, so that's uh, who we are, who I'm representing, in that case, the Rida Dance Center in Sofia, but also to open the door uh, to them for our uh, mission that everyone is a welcome and uh, and the way that you are trying to build these bridges because you are doing that with uh, your activities in Bide, in the work in La Caldera. So I know that's how many things you're doing. So I believe that you attract those kind of people. And so that it's a, like how to say, kind of um, uh, a goal that we have together to complete, to to connect, to attract, to build, and to share the importance of the contemporary performing arts in that case. Thank you so much for the invitation. And I wish to all your listeners to have a beautiful day and uh, not to be scared to design their life and the way that they want to be tomorrow. Totally. Thank you so much and you're welcome. This was the episode number 88 and see you in the next one. <laughs>